Well, I didn't understand anything. <laughs> I don't speak Italian. <laughs> Morning from Bergamo in Italy, fourth largest city in the Lombardy region. And I'm here for a two day visit. I just needed to clear out of London. It's so wet and windy the last, last few days. But the sunshine here is very welcome. 16 degrees, toasty warm. I'm going to enjoy myself the next two days. Then the first day today, I'm going to head up to the, uh, the Cite Alta, or the Upper Town. This is the old walled city of Bergamo. I do like my walled cities. So I'm going to take a look up there and see what we can discover. Hopefully we'll find a, a church with an unusual name and a site of an execution. We'll see what other history we can discover along the way. But to get up there, well, I've got to use the funicular railway. And I love funicular railways. There we go. <laughs> so let's get my ticket. I board the funicular railway up to the, uh, the old city area. for a single ticket. Nice little ride up on the funicular. And this is the old walled area, the old city of Bergamo. So let's have a walk around and see what we can discover. Today's been so good so far. Came straight out of the airport, straight onto the number one bus, which brought me up to the uh, funicular. Just three euros for a single journey. And then straight up, on the, uh, on the funicular. Couldn't have done it any quicker. Absolutely fantastic. And almost an hour from landing and I'm already up here. Just brilliant. I do love my little trips away. And this one's gonna be fun. <laughs> so let's explore Bergamo. <laughs> It's really pleasant walking around. Had a look around some of the back streets. Look at the architecture. I'm just watching all the locals come about their business. But this is the uh, Porta San Giacomo, the old entrance gate here into the walled city area. And it's absolutely fantastic looking up at it. As you uh, walk underneath the arch, you can see where the, the gates would have been. Looks like there's some sort of portcullis and the big hinges for the door. Absolutely, uh, absolutely fantastic to see this. And uh, it's completed in 1593. You can look at the, uh, the top and see the winged lion, the symbol of the uh, Venetians who actually built the, uh, the walls here back in the 16th century. And this fantastic entrance gate. So anybody visiting the walled city would have walked up the uh, cobbled ramp up to the uh, entrance gate and be greeted with this fantastic sight. Absolutely beautiful. I've seen so many 
entrance gates into walled cities on my travels around Europe and every single one is different. This one really is probably the most beautiful I've seen. Um, the white stonework really stands out. And as I was coming here on the bus, I could see in the distance through the driver's window the wall city up on the, uh, up on the hill. And I could make out this entrance gate. Absolutely beautiful. But what is, is beautiful are the views looking over the new city here of Bergamo. Just walk around here. Absolutely beautiful. Turn the camera around and you can see the, the, uh, the views. Yeah, it's worth coming here just for the views, it really is. So let's walk into the city centre, to the old city, and see what else we can discover. It is absolutely beautiful here. I've visited so many towns and cities in Italy, but the charm of an old walled town, walled city is absolutely lovely. And it's even it's nice here actually. I've walked, walked into the uh, Piazza Vecchia. Now back in Roman times, this was the site of the Roman Forum, the center of, uh, of, of the Roman town here buildings around the outside, well they're 15th century. They're absolutely beautiful to look at. But it's quite interesting here because I was reading about the history of this square and back in February 1511 a man called Dorosha was hanged and then burnt here in this square. Sadly I couldn't find out any more details about him and his crime but it's interesting to know that this was the location of an execution. But what was, what was recorded though was the, uh, the cost. And that was down at 16.3 lira. But not knowing how much people earned back in uh, 1511, it's difficult to work out whether that was uh, expensive or not. You have to, have to look at it in context of what you could buy for a, for a lira or how much someone earned in a week or a month how many lira they earned, to work out whether that was expensive or not. But uh, it's interesting to read up about that. And a little fountain here as well. Uh, it's the Contarini Fountain, built in 1780. And it's really rather nice, here in the middle of this uh, little square. Piazza, as they say, here in Italy. But just up the end here is the, uh, is an old church. Let's go take a look at that. But what is interesting is the, uh, the bell tower. The bell tower began building it back in 1436. And by the end of the century, it was complete. And looking up at it, it's absolutely beautiful. Especially the, uh, the clock, which I believe was renovated in 1968. I think that's the date on the front. Ah, absolutely beautiful looking up at it. And on the other side of the bell tower, is the baptistry. Now this was constructed back in 1340 by Giovanni de Campione for the Basilica of Santa Maria Maggiore. And during the, the, build, the major building works of the 1650s, the baptistry was actually dismantled. And it was saved and in 1856, it was reassembled in the canon's courtyard. Looks absolutely fantastic. Looking at it, it really is a, a beautiful structure. And it's moved to its present site in uh, 1889. Absolutely beautiful. And then there's the, uh, the front of the basilica. And that ornate carving, the stonework. Very, very elaborate. Just as so many basilicas and cathedrals are in Italy. Really is just, just beautiful looking up. Oh, you hear the bells as well. 
That's lovely to hear the bells chiming. Do you like hearing bells of cathedrals? There's another entrance porch on the side. This is the Giovanni de Campione's porch. It's really rather nice to look up. Statues on the top and the other uh, coloured stonework. Absolutely beautiful. Basilica was founded in 1137. It's lovely and fairly quiet here as well. For the centre of the city, the old city, there aren't that many tourists around. We're the middle of March and uh, I guess the full season hasn't uh, started yet, full tourist season hasn't started. And it's just nice to sort of visit places out of season. And it's surprisingly warm as well. Absolutely beautiful. <laughs> but let's see what else we can discover here in Bergamo. I found another of these amazing little back streets. This little cobbled street. I don't know where it's going, but it's just wonderful to follow it. The architecture here is throwing up so many surprises. I've not come across a street like this in Italy before. I've come found similar, but nothing as quaint as this. And there's nobody around. There aren't many locals around. There's a few tourists, but not that many, because we're out of season. But walking up here, it's just got so much character, this street, with the windows and the doors. Absolutely beautiful. This is why I love coming to Italy. You just never know what you're gonna find. It's absolutely beautiful. It really is. I haven't had so much fun in ages of walking through back streets. Beautiful. But this is the uh, Visconti Citadel. It's a medieval sort of fortification. It was built around the 14th century by the Visconti family from Milan. Very wealthy family. And it's expanded by the Colleoni family of Bergamo. Another very wealthy family. It's absolutely beautiful here. The architecture is just beautiful. Piazza, Piazza della uh, Cittadella. Absolutely beautiful. The old stonework and the arches. Absolutely. I've just been blown away by the architecture here in Bergamo. It just has so much to offer. And I've passed a few museums as well. I haven't gone into them because I'm on a tight budget for this trip. I just wanted to walk around the, uh, the outsides of the buildings, look at the architecture, and see what I can discover. The stonework in here is absolutely amazing. Wow, looking up at the, uh, the archway, the painted brickwork, the huge rocks, the huge bricks, I should say, that uh, form, the, uh, form the walls. Wondering this might be what remains of the, the bishop's palace that used to be in Bergamo. Because back in the 11th and 12th century, the bishops ruled Bergamo. And I know that the tower in front of me actually dates from there, the bishop's tower. There's a door halfway up. Doesn't look very high. But I'm wondering whether that's where the bishop may have addressed the people. And I know the Pope addresses the people at Easter from the balcony in the Vatican and says mass. So I'm wondering whether perhaps that was the doorway that the bishop used. It's not very tall. Perhaps they had uh, short bishops back in those days. <laughs> but there's a, uh, an artist's impression on the wall here of what the complex might have looked like back in the sort of 14th, 16th century. 
really is quite uh, quite magnificent. And there's a little museum as well. It's a, it's a botanical gardens museum. So I'm going to wander in and have a look. And, uh, and then we'll come out and find that church, which has an unusual name. was rather rather fun all the displays were in Italian so I didn't understand too much well I didn't understand anything <laughs> I don't speak Italian <laughs> but it's interesting to see the displays and see how they've turned botanical gardens into a museum lots of drawings in there and uh, large seeds as well seed pods quite interesting even not as interesting as that archway that was deceptively large on the inside, didn't look it from the front. Once you get underneath, very cavernous. Interesting ceiling and the, uh, the portcullis area as well at the front. Really rather interesting. And of course, the uh, Venetian lion on the top. <sighs> absolutely, yeah, absolutely lovely. Bergamo threw out so many surprises. And another busy back road as well. But never mind. Let's go and find that church. <laughs> For an old medieval city with narrow back streets, there's a lot of traffic here. And most of it's on two wheels. Those on bicycles and Vespers. And they're so noisy, those little motorcycles. I don't know how they can be legal, I really don't. But that's modern city life, I suppose. Everybody's scooting around 100 miles an hour on little Vespers. I don't know. But I've reached the, uh, the St. Gotardo stairway, named after a monastery. It used to stand here that was demolished back in 1798. But what's interesting here is the church. And it's absolutely beautiful. It's the church of St. Grata Intervites, or St. Gra Saint Grata amongst the grapevines. What an unusual name for a church. Now, St. Grata is Bergamo's co-patron saint and was originally buried within the church. She was martyred in the year AD 307 for helping to bury another martyr, that being Alexander of Rome. The church was originally built in the 14th century, but knocked down 200 years later to make way for the city walls. And the church was rebuilt again in the 18th century. And when the church was built originally, it was surrounded by grapevines, hence the name. Intervites. I've really enjoyed my day here in Bergamo. Just a shame I'm not here long enough to enjoy more of the sights and the museums and all that Bergamo has to offer. Tomorrow I'm going to explore the, the new city as I head back to the, uh, the railway station and then catch my bus to the airport. So this is where I end this video. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and follow my journey. There's over 300 videos on my channel and over 12 series as well from various places around Europe. So thank you so much for watching and we'll see you tomorrow.